guess it's uh, Sontos. It's probably not. It's probably Shontos or something. Um, uh, Vardis is at the um, Jet Propulsion Lab, which is um, JPL, NASA, NASA JPL. So hopefully most people know that. Um, so Vardis, for me, it's 6 p.m. here. So mm -hmm. I think I can say Calispera to you. Uh, another it's, one of my... It's, it's Calispera I, for you and Calimera for me. Oh, Calimera, there you go. <laughs> um, so Vardis, you're, uh, you're originally a biological oceanographer and fisheries scientist. Mm -hmm. And you've been working in oceanographic data management and geospatial information systems with remote sensing data for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you've been uh, working on the NASA Salinity Satellite Mission and Field Campaign. So, um, and you've also been doing a lot of stuff on, with uh, CEOS coverage. And we right. obviously geo and CEOS. So for those who don't know CEOS, it's the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites. It's about, um, about 40 or 50 agencies, uh, mainly space agencies, but some others who are part of a uh, huge activity looking at missions and sensors and, and other space-based activities. So um, I will hand it over to Vardis. Great. Thank, thanks very much for that introduction. And uh, hopefully everyone can see my screen OK. Perhaps you can confirm. Steve, we, can we, you we see? Can see you. OK, awesome. Great. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Vardis Santos, uh, based at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And uh, today I'm, I'm going to give a brief overview of this uh, coverage initiative within CEOS and a uh, pro prototype open source technology uh, platform that we are uh, developing under this project, whose, whose objective really is to enable uh, improved and enhanced access to interagency satellite data products, but also in situ data in support of uh, open science and open applications. And I'd, I'd also uh, like to acknowledge my, my team at JPL who are involved in the technical de developments and their names are listed there. Vardis, can you just put it onto presentation mode? It, it is on my computer. Um, so I'm not sure what else I need to do. I, what I see on my screen, and I only have one monitor, is, um, is, the, is the presentation yeah. mode. Are, are you not seeing that? No, first is the best way to do is is you stop sharing. You go okay. to presentation mode, and then you share the presentation mode uh, monitor. And uh, okay, because once when you share, you have to have your presentation mode already open. It it okay. It's it's on. Let me try again. Share share screen. Select window. Uh, a PowerPoint slideshow, I guess. There you go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, anyway, I won't repeat. Um, I think the information conveyed quite quite well. So, in terms of the the broader issues and drivers for some of this work, uh, I think we're at a, a state now, given the various issues, environmental issues, and the like, that we really need to be uh, in a position to better uh, marshal and, and more efficiently marshal uh, available ocean observations of different types. Uh, for applications for societal benefit, and in order to uh, catalyze what in future will be a, an increasingly more data-driven uh, blue, e blue economy. And, you know, while oceanographic data is increasingly more available, access to these data sets is, um, is, remains highly fragmented, and the, the patterns, the, the mechanisms of access are quite heterogeneous between different agencies. One of the other challenges, I, I think, as well, is you know these uh, we, we're not really keeping pace with the increased volume and variety of data that's being produced. There's more and more sensors uh, producing higher resolution data sets, and so there's a little bit of a disconnect in the in the uh, distribution uh, of the of this uh, great variety and, and increasing volume of data. So the consequence of this is that you know the the potential of Earth observations is not really uh, being uh, fully realized to date, in my opinion, at least. 
and there's uh, opportunities for uh, engaging uh, emerging user communi communities and new application areas uh, that have a need for environmental information um, uh, to use these types of ob observations for integrated ecosystem assessment and management. And so to achieve this, I think, you know, we as a community need to try to reduce uh, technical barriers to the discovery, access and utilization uh, of data sets uh, across agency repositories by a provisioning of uh, value added data services and tools, okay, that uh, allow easy aggregation and uh, utilization of, of these various data sets. And I think uh, this development would contribute to the next generation of data infrastructures that are needed if we're really to develop a, a more digitally integrated ocean observing system in support of uh, the UN sustainability goals and of course this uh, new uh, UN decade of the ocean that's been launched. Okay, so uh, a brief overview of what, what coverage is. It's a formal initiative within CEOS. It's uh, also a project that's led by NASA. Uh, it's a cross-cutting collaborative effort involving the four CEOS uh, virtual uh, constellations, so sea surface temperature, winds, al altimetry, uh, and ocean color radiometry. And there's also a tight connection from the beginning with the uh, Geo MBON and Geo Blue Planet initiatives. So as I mentioned, really the motivation is to enable more widespread and integrated use, uh, you know, synergistic use of interagency satellite data in support of ocean sciences and applications for societal benefit, and to address key constraints to access and synergistic use of these multi-sensor uh, and parameter earth observation, particularly amongst new user communities. And we know that there is a need for this type of thing, uh, you know, it's a response to needs of the ocean community for more integrated access to analysis ready data in support of some of these uh, sustainable development goals related to marine biodiversity. So the specific goals of the project is to implement a technology uh, platform that leverages largely uh, available open source data. Uh, many of these developments are occurring at JPL that provide uh, access to complementary satellite and in-situ data from distributed sources via some uh, value-added data services. And we also wanted to provide a, a coherent curated set of global interagency data products from these four ocean virtual constellations at a common baseline resolution as a, as a kind of uh, baseline data set. But the intent is to focus on higher resolution data sets, uh, global data sets next. And we didn't only want to, um, you know, put together a technical system, we wanted to actually demonstrate the utility of the technologies in the context of a pilot thematic ecosystem application uh, relating to high seas fisheries and biodiversity in relation to the environment. So from the outset, coverage um, has adopted a phase development approach. Uh, back in December, we completed phase B, which was the uh, implementation of a prototype uh, system, uh, which, is, which I'll talk more about and which is online. Uh, but recently, we kicked off our phase C uh, activity as well, which I'll describe in a minute. Uh, our, our approach is uh, obviously to promote open source software development and several tools coming out of this uh, project are available open source. Uh, we emphasize data interoperability standards and the FAIR principles. And we really want this to be a community driven uh, development. So there's a lot of engagement of stakeholders, and we have an advisory board that provides uh, overall guidance. So this, this figure um, basically summarizes uh, our distributed data architecture, uh, supporting this ecosystem application that we, demonstration application that we put together during phase B. Uh, the two red dots represent our satellite data nodes that are, that are hosted on uh, cloud computing environments, um, AWS for the NASA uh, and US data sets, and uh, for the Copernicus marine environmental uh, data used by coverage uh, that is uh, hosted at uh, on Wikio, the Wikio cloud environment uh, that's provided by UMETSAT. Um, and 
within these cloud environments, it, it, they host our complete software stack, which provide access to these data sets and services. In addition, the blue dots that you see there, uh, we're, con we're connecting to select in situ data providers, uh, in particular uh, animal telemetry uh, data providers at IMOS, the Integrated Marine Ocean Observing System in Australia and CSIRO. And on the US side, uh, the Integrated Ocean Observing System Animal Telemetry Network uh, that, that uh, you know, collates and provides animal telemetry data sets um, from the US, um, from US uh, you know, uh, projects. Uh, in addition, we are integrating some uh, fisheries data from these four uh, global tuna RFMOs and uh, also integrating data from Global Fishing Watch. This is AIS vessel uh, tracking and positional information. Okay, um, we have implemented a, uh, an initial website and uh, you know, prototype portal for our project that provides descriptive information on coverage, um, uh, the initiative and the project. It integrates some of our prototype data services and tools. There's a resource area for uh, documentation that we produce and tutorial videos um, that are available through a YouTube channel that we've provided. There's also a news area where we uh, frequently post on uh, events and announcements. And we do have this uh, Twitter channel where we uh, post, post um, newsworthy items as well. Uh, we've integrated Google Analytics into the platform. And so we have very detailed metrics uh, on areas of the site that are, that are being accessed, the number of users, the features that are of interest. And uh, up till now, we've had uh, a, a, about 1,000 uh, users access the site from more than 77 countries. So there seems to be you know, a considerable interest uh, in, in what we've put together. So um, one of the, the key pieces uh, in terms of the value-added data services is a web-based data visualization tool that provides some uh, quite advanced functionality. It allows uh, integrated visualization of both satellite and in situ data. And it allows you to step through dynamically in time uh, and view both synchronized, tightly synchronized horizontal and vertical views of data series uh, as they evolve over, over time. Uh, there's also very precise control of the time intervals of stepping uh, ranging from literally seconds, if you have high frequency uh, in situ data, to you know weeks, basically. So the user has has full control. Um, there's an integrated data search and filtering capability where you can essentially filter down uh, the collections for visualization uh, based on um, different variables such as the platform, the variable, the measurement variable, the program, uh, the sensor, etc. And it also includes a one-stop data uh, subsetting and download capability. As I mentioned, uh, you know, this is one of our in, uh, open source uh, software offerings. It's based on JPL's common mapping, mapping client. Uh, in terms of next steps for the development, uh, we plan on uh, integrating some analytics functions uh, in the tool so that you can first visually explore the data and then start to produce uh, interactively data summaries uh, or do co-location operations, so satellite in situ matchups that typically uh, may be of interest. Okay, uh, this is a YouTube video that's brief and runs very quickly. Let's see if it comes up. And this is uh, one example of, of different data sets that we have implemented. Uh, as examples, uh, this is a sail drone data set off of Baja, California. Uh, we can, as you can see on the left, we map the, the trajectory. There's a uh, kind of a snail trail that indicates the current time step that we're in. And then adjacent, uh, we have a range of uh, plots that we can, we can set up very easily. And you'll see some examples of this as this runs now. So I've, we've already set up the plots. I'm, I'm producing another plot now that will be a correlation type plot. We can hover over points, zoom in, and get values. Uh, we also have other plots that ha have previously been considered, depth profile plots, time series plots. And as we animate, you can see this black line represents the time interval. We can broaden that. We can zoom in 
uh, temporally, we can also link a specific plot to the specific time interval that's been selected. We can animate, um, and you can see the the time series all uh, synchronized also with the map views, the, the darkest snail trail that's jumping around on, on, on the map. So there's complete flexibility in, in you know, the, the plots you can, you can set up uh, using, this, using this tool. Uh, another sort of element of coverage is this integration of this uh, cloud analytics uh, platform, SDAP. That's another uh, JPL development, and it's it's also an open source project within uh, Apache, the Apache Foundation. And really, the concept here is to kind of enable uh, analysis and querying of data, so uh, on on large data sets without requiring download. So um, you know these operations can be performed. Um, uh, via interfaces such as Jupyter Notebooks and, and the APIs, uh, SDAP APIs that we provide. Uh, and the actual compute parallel type uh, computations can be performed efficiently in these cloud environments where our software is, de is deployed in a scalable manner uh, close to the data as well, which basically minimizes the need for download uh, and, and acquisition. And what you only basically get, get back is the result. Uh, and you can manipulate those results in various ways, plot them and the like. Um, the next slide is again a, a demo and the actual links are provided uh, in my slide set above. Uh, you know, this is a larger uh, video and I encourage folks to, to take a look, uh, you know, check out the, the YouTube channel and, and, and uh, take a look. But this is a, a time series calculation that's performed on a large area. Um, off of the Gulf of Alaska, and it basically executes, uh, you know, these these analytics requests on the fly and returns a result as a sort of average, uh, you know, sea surface temperature value uh, for the for that spatial domain over this uh, one year time period. There are other examples. There's built-in analytics to compute climatologies, anomalies, time area averages, and the like. And, uh, you know, uh, as, as I said, uh, there's not enough time to go into all of that, but uh, you know, check out the, the demo video and, um, you know, uh, let us know as well if there's any, any questions uh, from there. Oops, let's see. So let me exit this and continue. Uh, as well, you know, we, we want to be able to discover which data sets are included in our application. And what we what we have uh, implemented is a uh, kind of a data set search interface that essentially integrates data set metadata across multiple agency repositories. So for the select data sets that are currently included, we integrate metadata records from NASA's common metadata repository, from FEDIO, which is the European uh, centralized uh, metadata repository for Earth, Earth science, uh, Earth observations that includes the Copernicus marine data of interest here. Uh, metadata catalogs from IMOS in Australia and also CSIRO's Marlin system. And essentially what this interface allows you to do is, is do keyword based search and also filter down by facets, uh, you know, variables of interest such as resolution, product type, etc. And uh, what you get back is a, is a description of the data set and access point information. So again, all of this is still kind of a work in, in progress and a prototype, uh, and we definitely encourage uh, you know feedback um, when you you know if you if you do get the opportunity to to check things out. Um, there'll be further development, as I'll describe in a minute. Uh, one other aspect, which is a little bit tangential, but it's integral to the coverage uh, project as well. Uh, when we did our phase C, uh, phase A requirements and uh, data inventory uh, activity review, uh, we noticed that there were very uh, few offerings in terms of um, gap-free multi-mission uh, uh, or level four uh, ocean color data products. And so uh, one of our collaborators at JPL has experience uh, producing such data sets, such level four data sets for SST, uh, uh, the newer SST uh, data set that's, that's very popular. So we decided to basically uh, implement the Muir algorithm for ocean color 
to develop what is currently an evaluation data, uh, data product, uh, but that will essentially develop further, um, integrate basically the level two uh, observations of uh, ocean color from MODIS, uh, VIRS, and, uh, and, and also Sentinel-3. Um, and we feel that uh, we're confident that we could get um, a data product that is at higher resolution uh, at one kilometer that will complement also the new SSD uh, high resolution data set that is also a one kilometer uh, product. So part of this involved not only uh, you know, applying the algorithm, producing the evaluation uh, data set and forward stream, but actually doing the validation exercises, which involved comparison uh, across global uh, uh, repositories of in situ data from CBAS uh, for ocean color measurements, chlorophyll A. Uh, we also did very uh, localized um, into comparisons with sail drone and other in situ uh, uh, data sets that we have access to. And we also did some into comparisons between uh, different uh, level four data products that now exist from different agencies, and those are listed there. Um, we, this project, you know, as I mentioned from the outset, places a lot of emphasis on the community engagement, com community and, and stakeholder engagement. And uh, because, as I said, we, we really want this development to be kind of a, a, a bottom-up community-driven type of approach. Um, uh, and uh, so we've been involved in numerous stakeholder consultations over, over the past couple of years. We've presented at numerous conferences and, uh, you know, just during our phase B activity, which was one year, we had three workshop events, including at Ocean Sciences and ESIP. Uh, and we do plan to have another consultative workshop where we'll showcase where we are in terms of our phase C activity uh, coming up at Ocean Sciences in February. Uh, this is my last slide, and um, basically just to let you know in terms of what, what's in store for our Phase C work, which kicked off in June. This is a one and a half year activity, so we're about three months in. Uh, obviously, again, this uh, community engagement piece is, is vital, uh, but in on the technical side, the, the intent is to harden and further extend uh, some of the prototype technical capabilities that we developed. Uh, we definitely want to emphasize now the higher resolution data sets uh, and augment our baseline uh, sort of collection uh, with these high, uh, select higher resolution data sets and also support near real time and forward data streams. Um, we want to expand further upon this, uh, these ecosystem thematic uh, application use cases that I, that I discussed for fisheries and biodiversity. Uh, with a much more regional focus involving more detailed uh, sort of regional data sets. Um, and I can describe those uh, at, a, at another time, perhaps. Uh, part of this also is to think ahead and how, you know, assuming we put something that's useful together, uh, how could we potentially operationalize uh, coverage? You know, what, what would that entail? Uh, how would we sustain this development uh, in future and, uh, you know, maybe develop additional spin-offs of this, this project. And part of this may, uh, you know, this, this sustainability uh, concept uh, we're thinking is, um, is, is happening in the context of this UN decade of the ocean for sustainable development. Uh, we submitted to the uh, Ocean Decade US, which is the, na the US national uh, Academy sort of coordinating body uh, for the UN decade, an ocean shock concept last Decem December uh, relating to next generation data service infrastructures for a more digitally uh, integrated ocean observing system. So we look forward to engaging with, with other projects and, and programs uh, under, under the UN decade as well. And uh, that concludes my presentation. Uh, if there are any sort of questions or comments, I'd, I'd be happy to take those. Thank you, Vardis. That was uh, that was that was good. Um, I, the, there's a whole host of things from a geo perspective. Um, we're running a climate and ocean session at the uh, at Geo Week. Mm -hmm. um, Peter Thompson from Fiji, 
and some people from the COP26 talking about, you know, the increased focus on ocean from a UNFCCC perspective. Mm -hmm. And we hopefully someone from IOC, UNESCO talking about the UN decade as well, UN ocean decade. Mm -hmm. um, there are um, some questions. Uh, first one is, um, do you see the FOS4G community helping to address the broad issues you outlined, for example, next generation of data services and tools or even infrastructure? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, um, I think this needs to be a, you know, this is a big problem, uh, issues of data interoperability, uh, improved software to uh, provide value, sort of value-added data services that allow improved integration of data across agency repositories. So it's it's more than one, you know, relatively modest uh, NASA project can 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 tackle. But we we do want to sort of highlight uh, some approaches that we are developing and think uh, you know could be fruitful, and uh, also partner with people who may be you know interested. Uh, further in the open source development side of things as well. Um, so we're, you know, we're, we're happy to collaborate both on the application side and on the data side and in terms of the software development, if, if that is of interest. Great. In, in the chat, um, someone, uh, Andre, asked if you can put the URL of your YouTube video, if you can post that. Yes. Okay. I, I will, yeah. Um, there are two other Kind of quick questions, I think. One is, uh, there were a lot of logos shown. Are there any partners or stakeholders in Africa or Asia? Well, that's, yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, question and a, and a good question. Um, so, as I said, this has been a, a sort of a phased development approach. And now for these regional spin-offs that, that we're developing, we are working, uh, looking to work with um, partners in South Africa um, in the context of, of CEOs uh, as well. So yes, it's, it's not part of, it, it wasn't part of our prototype and you know, phase B activity, but we are looking to develop these regional spit-offs as well, uh, including something for Southern Africa. Great. And then the last one is, um, is there a link? I guess is this. A, I'm guessing this is a NASA link. Is there a link for the various APIs and open source code locations, e.g., Apache? Yes, there there are uh, on the coverage website, which is coverage.cos.org. There's a resources uh, area or page, and within that there there are links uh, to the open source software that are these JPL. Uh, utilities that I that I mentioned in my my project so one can find those out uh, you know find the links there with also some documentation and uh, pointers to the github sites uh, and the Apache Foundation github as well okay perfect thank you very much um,